Welcome to your small intestine. We're moving along here with the uh, digestive system. And just to review, we started up here in the oral cavity. In the mouth, you swallowed your food bolus and went down the esophagus and passed through that esophageal hiatus that you have in the diaphragm, went through the gastroesophageal sphincter down into the stomach where it got uh, churned around uh, with pepsin and hydrochloric acid to denature proteins and um, start digesting proteins into uh, smaller chains of amino acids. And then chyme, little bits at a time, the contents of the stomach, which are called chyme, are emitted into the duodenum. That's the first part of the small intestine. So your small intestine is divided up into three sections, which you learned about in Biology 201. The first part is called the duodenum. Uh, the second part is called the jejunum. And then the third part is called the ileum. Now the, je the je 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 jejunum and the ileum are kind of all wadded up together there. So it's hard to distinguish on a diagram which part is the jejunum and which part is the ileum. But you should know the order of those three. So that's where we're headed now down into the small intestine. And then we're going to see the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas play important roles in what's going on in the uh, small intestine as well. All right, so we've moved out of the stomach, which has been cut off. So the stomach would be sitting right in here. And we've peeled that off so we can see what's going on in here. But here's your first part of the small intestine, the duodenum. It's not very long and it's uh, very closely associated with the pancreas. The pancreas, as it turns out, is going to make the majority of the digestive enzymes that are going to help us chop apart our, uh, finish chopping apart our carbohydrates and our po proteins and our lipids. The liver up here as well um, produces bile, and bile is going to help you dissolve your lipids. It helps dissolve those lipids in the small intestine so that the enzymes can actually access them and help break them down. If you think about it, uh, just like if you had grease sitting in water in your uh, kitchen sink and you have grease, oils and water don't mix, bile is going to help the oils and greases and so forth that we take in on our diet combine with the watery fluids in the duodenum so that they can be digested better. Bile is kind of like your own personal detergent, and it's made by the liver. It's stored over here in the gallbladder, and you have the, um, the bile duct, which brings that bile down here behind the pancreas and squirts it uh, through this opening, this hepatopancreatic sphincter here, um, opens up this opening that allows that bile to squirt out in here into the duodenum. Then your pancreas, you have lots and lots and lots and lots of cells in here that produce uh, pancreatic juice, which contains lots of enzymes that drain into this pancreatic duct that you see there in brown that's inside the pancreas. And then that merges with the bile duct and the pancreatic juice gets squirted through this opening into the duodenum as well. So those liver and pancreas substances are gonna help us out with digestion. All right, so we're going to call this the intestinal phase of digestion now that we're moving down into the duodenum. And uh, there are some hormones that are made in the duodenum as well, and we'll talk more about what these do shortly, but they're called enterogastrones. That's the name for them. Like hormones that are produced around the entero generally refers to the intestinal tract. Enteric, E-N-T-E-R-I-C, is a term that refers to the intestinal tract, and gastro refers to the stomach. So these are produced in this region, and they act on these digestive organs as well. So they're called enterogastrones. So one of those is called secretin, and again, we'll talk more about what that does shortly. There's another one called cholecystokinin, which is abbreviated CCK. And there's a third one called vasoactive intestinal peptide. We're not really going to talk much about that one. We'll mainly focus on the other two. <clears throat> All right, so as I mentioned earlier, as this chyme is coming in from the stomach, 
passing through the pyloric sphincter and into the uh, duodenum. Uh, only a little bit of that is supposed to come in at a time. You don't want an overload of chyme coming into the duodenum. Um, if it does, then a dumping syndrome will occur where you'll feel nauseous and then you'll vomit. Uh, in people who have gastric bypass surgery, uh, in order to help them lose weight because they're obese, uh, this is a pretty common occurrence. This dumping syndrome takes place a little bit more easily. Now, if you move on from the duodenum, the next stretch of the small intestine is called the jejunum. And that's about 2.5 meters long, so that's like 8 feet long. And then finally, the third stretch of the small intestine is called the ileum. Ileum with an E and not an I. Ileum with an I refers to um, the main portions of your pelvic bones. So keep in mind that spelling difference. And that's about 3.6 meters long, so that's like 11 feet long. So pretty long. It's obviously has to be wadded up pretty tightly to fit in there. Okay, so let's take a look at the, uh, the small intestine in more detail. There's a lot of folding along the inside surface. That mucosal lining of the small intestine has different kinds of folds. So first of all, it's folded. You have these circular folds that ring around like this along the inside lining. Those are called circular folds. And then you have these little tiny individual folds that you see here. That's getting down to the cell level, the microscopic level. Those are called villi. So imagine right along that hump and then right along that one and right along that one you have epithelial cells that are lining those surfaces. So those, those up and down waves that you see there are called villi. Why do you have all these folds along the lining of the small intestine? One of the main functions of your small intestine is going to be what? Absorption. And just like we saw with the alveoli in the lungs where you have lots and lots of surface area to allow for gas exchange, in your small intestine, you have lots of folding, both at a macroscopic level that you can see with the eyes and at a microscopic level uh, to provide more surface area for digesting foods. All right, now if you're looking at the different layers of the small intestine wall, as you go deep to that inner lining, you have connective tissues in here where you're going to have blood vessels and nerves and lymphatic vessels. and I. Uh, you go outward from there, you have two layers of smooth muscle um, with fibers that are running this way around the wall of the small intestine and some that are running lengthwise. And so those are going to help out with the different types of muscular contraction movements that have to take place uh, inside here. I like this part of the diagram up here because they're showing you that you have lots of small arteries and veins that are going to be picking up or delivering blood to the wall of the small intestine itself and then the veins are going to be collecting the nutrient rich blood. Remember your cells here that are lining the inside of the small intestine are absorbing nutrients. Those nutrients are going to be transferred into the capillaries that you can't see on the diagram but are uh, serving that lining and that nutrient rich blood gets picked up by these smaller veins Eventually, those are going to lead to the superior mesenteric or your inferior mesenteric vein. And eventually, that blood's going to make its way to the hepatic portal vein, which is going to take it to the liver for filtration. And we'll be talking a little bit more about what liver filtration means shortly. Now, in the next diagram, we're going to zoom in on one of these, on a villus. So villi is plural. Villus is singular. So if you're looking at, at these at more of a microscopic type level and you zoom in, um, the lining here, so the lumen of the small intestine is here and surrounding these villi. And you might have looked at these cells in Biology 201. Those are simple columnar epithelial cells that are lining the inside surface of the uh, small intestine. 
that interior to there in tan, you have connective tissue, and it's going to have blood vessels in it, arteries and veins, and again, the, and capillaries, capillary beds that are in here as well. And again, in blue, your veins there are going to be picking up the nutrients that have been absorbed across these epithelial cells of the small intestine. That's going to be one of their main jobs is absorbing those digested nutrients. When we covered the uh, lymphatic system, I mentioned that there were special lymphatic vessels in the small intestine called lacteals, and there's one of those. So they poke up into each villus, and they collect fats that are being absorbed from the diet. Fats have some special processing that they have to go, uh, go through in order to be um, make their way into the bloodstream. And so they actually get picked up into these lacteals, which will carry those uh, absorbed fats to the lymphatic vessels and they'll pass through the lymphatic system and get filtered and so forth like we talked about when we covered that body system before they get dumped back into the, the blood. All right, so that's what a villus looks like. And then if you zoom in on just one of these cells, one of these simple columnar epithelial cells, uh, this is what it would look like, one of those. All right, so on this side, this is the lumen of the small intestine. This is where your digested or digesting food is located. And then lo notice that that surface, the surface of the cell that's facing the lumen, the membrane of that cell actually has little tiny folds in it as well. Those are called microvilli because you're down at a very detailed microscopic level. Uh, that's also called the brush border. That also is providing more surface area for absorption. And you also have digestive enzymes, as we'll talk about a little bit later, that are embedded there along the brush border, which do some of the final digestive steps with our food. Then those nutrients are going to be taken in, absorbed uh, through the brush border here inside these cells, and they're transported across these cells over here to the other side. They'll pass out from here and they'll get absorbed into the, uh, the capillaries that are located in here, which will take those to the venules and these veins that are going to carry that, um, that blood toward the hepatic portal vein, which will then take it to the liver for processing. And as we're going to see when we talk about the liver, the liver does lots and lots and lots and lots of different things with our nutrients. It's responsible for processing and dealing with um, most of these absorbed nutrients. So that's why that blood that has taken up these nutrients goes to the liver first. All right, so as I mentioned, we actually have three features along the inside lining of the small intestine that help us out with absorption. You've got these circular folds. And those you can see with the naked eye. All right, so they're, they're like one centimeter deep, half an inch deep. So they're very obvious. They're kind of like the rugi in the stomach. That also helps as the chyme moves into the duodenum, into the small intestine it helps it kind of spiral through so it doesn't flow through too quickly. It slows it down and that helps increase your nutrient absorption. Then the villi are approximately a millimeter high. So that's like the width of this paper here. <laughs> that's getting down to almost a microscopic type level. So very thin. And they do have a capillary bed inside them and a lacteal for absorbing fats. And then again, as I mentioned, the microvilli or the brush border, that's located along each individual cell along the surface that faces the lumen of the small intestine. All right, now we have more to talk about with the small intestine, but we're going to take a time out and discuss what's going on with the liver because it's big and it does lots of stuff for us. And so we're going to take a little detour over to the liver and talk about what it does. Um, we're also going to wind up taking a detour over to the pancreas and talking about what it does before we resume our story of the food bolus passing um, through the digestive tract. <laughs>